chapter 11 and we will continue our lesson until the end para next uh, Sunday we are going to discuss another topic Less Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices so let's pray father once again we're so thankful for the time that you have given us to once again study your word i pray lord that you will give us wisdom supply lord the knowledge that we need so that we can use them lord as we serve you and as we do that oh god help us lord with uh, supply us with enough grace so that we can do it lord according to your will and for your glory bless us lord as we study your word and give me wisdom in uh, this uh, situation, O oh God, may you be glorified and may we learn more from thy word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. So we uh, stop with deadness. <clears throat> and we said that the uh, natural result of being dull in hearing the word of God is deadness in spiritual matters. Meaning to say that the Lord cannot use us in order to bring spiritual blessings to other people. We're not going to be interested in soul winning. We're not be interested in reading the Word of God. We're not going to be uh, interested in prayer. We're not going to be uh, interested in giving, in going, and whatever activity that we can do as a Christian, we're not going to be interested because we are just dying uh, in spiritual matters we cannot die spiritually because we're already saved but we can die with our enthusiasm with spiritual matters and may not do them in our lives anymore so these are uh, uh, some of the uh, tools that the devil is using number 12 is defame defame d-e-f-a-m-e -E. it means that we are criticizing or belittling other believers we are having an attitude of like pride that we think that we are better than other people or holier than thou attitude remember the bible exhort us to esteem others higher than we are christians are supposed to be characterized by humility pride has no room in the heart of a christian because pride will kill whatever things uh, is uh, God doing in our lives a person who is uh, prideful is full of himself but a person who is humble is filled with the spirit of God only God can make us humble there is no amount of effort that we can do in order to make ourselves humble why? because we are still in the flesh and the flesh will always act according to those things that will gratify the flesh if we can have it one way our way then we're going to get everything that we can in order to make ourselves happy in order for us to be joyful in this life that is the reason why one of the most important philosophy that man has is to pursue their happiness and man always says that whatever makes you happy do it but that is the flesh. So if you are in the flesh, we have to be careful because there is a tendency to belittle other people. That's why if you're going to notice, whenever comparison is made, we always compare ourselves to those people that we think are lesser than us. Example, yung katalinuan mo, ikukumpare mo, titiyakin mo, ikukumpara mo, sa mas matalino ka para hindi ka mapahiya kung halimbawa maitim ka gusto mong pakitang maputi ka tatabi ka dun sa mas maitim para lilitaw na mas maputi ka kaya kung diyan nagtataka yung mga maliliit magbabarkade hindi napapansin madalas magkakasama sila army sila Kay si Jalil Si Rejoice. Bakit? Iisa height niya ni. Mga kasing laki ng bote ng pamada. At pagkatapos, makikita mo pa yung mga yan. Tingnan nga natin kung sino mas matangkad. Hindi <laughs> ka talikod ka. Gagal ang pahingso. Ang dadaya pa. Why? Because there is the tendency 
Because we are still in the flesh and the devil will supply these things in order for us to criticize or to belittle other believers. That is why a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Sometimes if you have this knowledge, you may think that you are better than other people. That is why studying the word of God, even though it's very profitable, can also pose a danger because you might think upon yourself that you are better and more learned than other people. You see, the attitude that we need to have is as we study the word of God, it should make us humble because we will see there that without God, then there is really nothing that we can do in this life. But sometimes we let knowledge uh, goes into our, go into our head and then it will puff up our ego and then we are going to be uh, full of ourselves and we can try or, or uh, tend to belittle or to criticize other Christians. So if we have something against a believer, we need to tell them. We need to talk to them, but we should not defame them or belittle these people. Because when we do that, we are forgetting that God does not like this. In Psalms 101 and verse number 5, there is this warning of the Lord regarding defamation or defaming other people. Whoso privately slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. You see, God does not like people slandering or defaming other people. He says, they are the ones that I'm going to cut off, not the person that they are defaming. They may be like that, but we do not have to announce it. They may be like that, but we do not have to uh, put them uh, down a little more. Because the Bible says, him that hath an high look and a proud heart, will not I suffer? The only reason why you will defame other people is because you have pride in yourself. Because you think that you are better than them. Listen, sa church hindi ho pagalingan. Sa church hindi pataasan. Sa church hindi uh, yung, yung pahigitan. Sa church ay pababaan at pasunuran sa kalooban ng Panginoon. That is what we need to put in our mind. So the devil will use his tool of defamation in order for us to belittle other people. And once we did that, it may discourage them. And once discouragement set in, we know what will be the result. They are going to come to a point of desperation and they will uh, have despair in life. So defamation. Number 13 is discord. Discord. Discord means that you are causing something in order for a church to be split over it. You are causing division. A court is something that is a, a tied together. But when you are sowing discord, you are tie, trying to break the cord that binds. Meaning to say, you are destroying the unity of the church. So when you are sowing discord, it means that you are a trouble maker. And your style or uh, what you use in order to sow discord is gossip. That's why talebearer are people that are sowing discord among brethren. Especially in the local church, iilan lang tayo. Pagka nag, nagtanim ka ng discord dyan, madaling tutubo yan. Do you remember the testimony, Brother Matthew? He said that I live in a small uh, town over there in America. And usually in a small town, people are closely knit together. And whatever happened will easily be known by all. So the same thing in the church. If you are sowing discord among the brethren, it will divide the church. It will divide the loyalty. It will cause trouble. It will bring strife. And it's going to destroy the unity of that church. And the body of the Lord Jesus Christ will be divided. That is the reason why we have to be careful in how we deal with the things that are happening in the church. If you have a question, you ask the proper people. If you do not understand something, you go to the right people. 
Sometimes you talk to other people not to find answers but to get an allegiance from other people. Hindi ka nagsasabi o nagtatanong para makakuha ka ng sagot kung hindi para makakuha ka ng simpatiya sa mga tao. Kaya there are people that are really uh, very scrupulous when it comes to these things. They are very subtle. They are cunning. They are crafty, ika nga, in doing these things. You see, uh, if you created a story that will make you an underdog, you can easily get the sympathy of other people. That's very easy. But if you will create a story wherein you are superior, you may not get their sympathy. You may get their, uh, like, like they will like you, or you might get their, uh, ang tawag doon, yung paghanga sa, uh, nila sa'yo, but you're not going to get sympathy. So the thing that you do is you make yourself lower, you call that false humility, so that you can get sympathy and you are going to use that very sympathy in order to get an allegiance against the authority in the church. And, some, and most of the time, it is happening in a church. Lalong-lalo na. Alam niyo mga kapatid, maraming abusadong pastor, pero maraming pastor na naaabuso. We need to understand that also. Kasi ang pastor is the authority in the church, not the but has an authority in the church. And if you have an authority, you need to act authoritatively. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes when you do that, it, you tend to be controlling, but you should not be. Sometimes, people that are affected can get a wrong interpretation of what people in authorities are doing. And sometimes they will use that in order to get people against the authority who might have been victim of the same a thing inside the church. That's why they will congregate together and they will start to sow discord among the brethren. And this is something that God hates. Look at Proverbs 6, 16-19. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. These six things that the Lord hates, you see? There are things that God hated. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven, are an abomination unto Him. Anim, kinamumuhian niya. Yung pito ay abomination, karumaldumal sa Kanya. Ano yun? A proud look. That is pride. So when you look, you need to be careful. You must have a humble look. Hindi, totoo yun. May mga taong. <laughs> Di ba? Yung hindi makayuko. Parang may ano. Tawag nun? Beke. Parang may stiff neck. Proud look. Naalala ko nung kapit nagpipreak sa uh, evangelist. Ano? Street preaching sa ano? Kabanatuan. Okay, Proud look, pero meron talaga mga taong ganyan. That is pride. A lying tongue. Yung mga mailig magsinungaling. Yung mga uh, kung ano-ano mga sinasabi. Lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood. Yan yung mga pumapatay ng tao. 
Ayaw ng Diyos yan. Next. An heart that devised wicked imaginations. Yung nag invento ng kasamaan. Kaya nga, hindi ba sabi ng Panginoon, in the last days, uh, wickedness will grow uh, worse and worse. Why? Because people are devising wickedness or evil things. Ano pa? Fit that be swift in running to mischief. Yung laging ang kaguluan, mga pagkakamali, laging nando doon, laging nagpupunta doon. Ito, ano sabi niya pa sa next? A false witness that speaketh lies. Yung nag, ang kanyang patotoo, hindi totoo. Amen. Kaya pag nagpapatotoo kayo, yung totoo, Karaya ko na nakita mga nagpapatotoo, hindi totoo, lalo na nung boy pa si Almeda. Napapanood niyo ba yung Jesus Miracle Crusade? Yung palakpakan natin ng Panginoon, kaya nang palakpak nila eh. Sabay-sabay sila eh. Pero mo may nagpatotoo. Sabi niya, ako po, nung ako po'y hindi pa kasama dito sa Jesus Miracle Crusade, ako po ay isang magnanakaw at mamamatay tao kanya. Ang ginagawa ko po ay ganito. Papasukin ko po ang isang bahay at pagkatapos titignan ko po muna yung laman ng refrigerator. Kakain pa ho ako ron. mag enjoy muna ako. At saka ako papanik kung sino yung mga makita kong tao ron. Papatayin ko kanya. At pagkatapos nanakawin ko yung kanilang mga gamit. Pero salamat! Nung ako po'y matagpuan ng ating butihing uh, mga ngaral na si Almeda, ay binago ko ng Diyos! Eh sabi ko, walang naniniwala. Bakit? Kasi kung may naniniwala, edi sana hinuli na siya ng pulis. Confession to a crime yun eh. Amen? Yung mga unsolved crimes, siya pala may kagagawan. Pero obviously, walang naniniwala sa kanya kung hindi sila sila lang. Because his testimony is not true. He is giving false witness. Amen? Maling patotoo. Kaya pag nagpapatotoo tayo, dapat yung tama. Eh, ito yung pampito. And he, et, ano rin yung pampito? Abomination. Amen. And he that soweth discord among brethren. That is why, sowing discord among brethren is a ground for excommunication. Because it is an abomination in the sight of God. When you sow discord among brethren, you are destroying the very church that the Lord Jesus Christ established. Kasi sinisira mo yung biro mo. Magkaibigan kami ni Mon. May sinabi ka. At dahil sa sinabi mo, namuhi ako sa kanya o namuhi siya sa akin. Isipin mo nangyari. Nagkakasundo tayong mga church members nitong church na ito. May itinanim ka at ang naging dahilan, nagkagalit-galit tayo. You are destroying the body of Christ that is sowing discord among brethren. Kaya mga kapatid, eh pastor, ang sinabi ko naman totoo, hindi ho lahat ng totoo sinasabi. Meron dang tamang pagsasabihan at merong tamang panahon na sasabihin. Hindi lahat ng totoo sasabihin. Sige nga, sino rito ang may balat sa puwet, taas ang kamay? O ako lang, may balat ako sa puwet eh. Pinagsasabi mo ba yon? Hindi ba totoo yun? Hindi lahat ng totoo dapat sabihin. Lalo na wala namang kabuluhan sa iyong pagsasabihan o kung makikreate lang ng hindi tama. Halimbawa, sabi ko, Brother Mon, sino yung sa likod mo? Tignan mo kung sino. Tignan mo naman kung sino yung sa likod mo. O sino yung Brad? Serious. Alam mo ba ang ginagawa niya? Pag nagsasalita ka, laging gumagano yun. Oh. Ano na pala, ano na mapapala noon pag sinabi ko kay Mon? May inis lang siya kay Rizon. Sasabihin niya, kala mo kung sino yung taong yun. Tingga, tingga, tinga ka lang. O gaganong ka pa yun, magagalit ka eh. Magagalit ka eh. Ay hindi ba? Magagalit ka eh. Ay si Brother Joel, nagalit sa amin yan. Baka sila ang hindi ligtas! Kanya o. Oh. Eh, pero, nagalit siya. Bakit? Kasi may sinabi sa kanya eh. Sowing discord among brethren. So we have to be careful regarding these things. Amen? Kung yung sasabihin mo, wala rin lang pakinabang, wag ka nang magsalita. 
At saka alam mo ba kapatid, pagka may sinasabi sa yung kasiraan, ano man tawag doon sa kasiraan? Sira eh, di ba? Ang sira, mabaho. Mabantot. At sinasabi sa tenga mo, ginagawang basurahan yung tenga mo. Pag ikaw ay tanggap ng tanggap, bandang huli, makakaroon ka ng tulok. Alam mo tulok, yung luga. Bakit? Eh, inayaan mong gawing basurahan yung tenga mo eh. Pag may magsasabi sa'yo tungkol sa tao na kakaiba o mali, ganito, kapatid, kung sino man yan, puntahan mo, kayo mag-usap. Amen? Nasa chest palitin natin niya, susumbong kita. Sige. Sumbong kita kay Mon. Sumbong kita kay Brother Gomer. Sabihin ko kay Pastor, naninira ka ng member dito sa church. O, eh, kung meron kang hindi gusto, sabihin mo ng diretsya. Kausapin mo yung tao at magkaso. Hindi naman yung, eh, dahil hindi mo gusto, kinausap mo para ipahiya. Hindi. You will talk to them because you want to be reconciled. Amen? Because why? Why? The devil is using this particular method in order to destroy the church and that is sowing discord among brethren. And as a child of God, we should work for the unity of the church, not for the division of our church. Amen? Next, number 14, defilement. Defilement. Defilement with the things of the world. You see, God insists that we should be a clean vessel because God will not use a dirty vessel. So he says that if we're going to purge ourselves from these things, then God can use us. But if we will let the word defile us, then no matter what kind of gift, ability, knowledge we may have, God cannot use us fully. Yes, we will be used, but not in a, in a way that our effectiveness will be maximized. Why? Because we are a vessel that is contaminated. And it cannot really glorify God in our lives. So, if, if defilement is coming, let us remember 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17. And let us counter the devil with this, so that we are going to uh, be able to deflect him if defilement is being thrown away, our way. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? You see, we are the temple of God. You see, in our time, uh, this is just a, a side comment. In our time, there are so many To a degree, it may be wrong. Do you know why? Because we are God's steward. What the Lord is giving to us must be used for the cause of God. Okay, the underlying philosophy is this. I've heard this many, many times. If it is for God, it must be first class. That's good to hear, right? It's good to hear. If you're going to build a building for the Lord... It must be first class. Use the first class materials. Use everything that is good. All the best because you are going to dedicate that to God. It is good to hear but it may not be right. Do you know why? And then they're going to make a comparison. Look at the temple in the Old Testament. They are made of gold and silver and precious stones. People are giving all their wealth in order for the temple to be built in a magnificent way. That's why people are in awe whenever they see the temple of God. Of course, if God is the one who will dwell there, you need to make it beautiful. You need to make it according to the specification of God. But in the New Testament, God is not dwelling in the building. He is dwelling in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we should be the one who is first class. Amen. Not the church. Of course, hindi naman tayo magtataro tayo ng barong-barong at doon natin sasambay ng Panginoon. Yung kaya natin ayusin, aayusin natin. Pero hindi natin uubusin ng pera dito kasi ang pera mas lalong dapat gamitin sa kaligtasan ng mga kaluluwa ng tao. Kaya nga sabi ko, that is what I like about Pastor Nable. 
Pastor Nable will settle for something that is lesser than the best so that much of the money will go to mission and they can reach more people for the glory of God. But there are churches who will spend hundreds of thousands or even millions in order to beautify the church so that people that will go there will be in awe. Sabi nga nung isa, nung bisitahin kami ni Pastor Nable sa aming church, luwa ang kanyang mata. Biro mong kasalanan ang ginawa mo, pinaluwa mo mata ng tao para dun sa iyong building. Oh, look at our sound system. This is a multi-million dollar sound system. Eh, nung kay Pastor Nable raw eh, ano ba yung maririntindihan ako at maririnig ng tao? At may intindihan na sinasabi ko na hindi masyadong mahal. Yun ang sound system natin. Yung sobrang pera, ilagay doon sa misyon. Naman? So we need to prioritize. But sometimes, because we are not careful, the devil will use something in order to uh, do something that may defile us, contaminate us. So we have to be careful regarding these things. If any man defile the temple of God, how can we defile the temple of God? Because of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The Bible says, Him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. God says that we are holy, consecrated, separated, and must live for the glory of God. That is the reason why Satan will defile us so that God will never be able to use us in a way that will really glorify God and we can maximize our influence in this world by serving the Lord. So defilement. Anything that can defile us, we must do away with it. Number 15, discontent. Discontent. So discontent is one of Satan's favorite lies. He tell people that things will be better if they go somewhere else. That is what the devil is doing. You see, the first time that you were here, you were so satisfied. You said that, my, this is a different church. This is a church where I will grow. Remember that time? This is a church where I will learn so many things. And then after a while, it will be better if I go to that church. It will, be, it will be better if I go to another country. It will be better if I have another pastor and if I have another brothers and sisters in the Lord. Why? Because the devil will supply discontent. And a person who is not contented is a person that will not stay in a place wherein God can really use him. So this is one of the favorites of the devil. You see, the devil will tell you that it would have been better if you will change marriage, marriage partner. Mas maganda siguro kung napangasawa ko si ano. Mas masaya siguro ako. Pero nung una, sabi mo, ako na ang pinakamasayang tao sa buong mundo. Nung ako sagutin mo. Tama, mali. Ako na pinakamasaya. Ngayon, siguro ko ang napangasawa ko si ano, mas masaya ang buhay ko. That is what the devil will supply. Discontent. Ayaw niyang makontento ka sa iyong sariling pamilya na magnasa ka ng iba pang pamilya. Ayaw niyang makontento ka sa iyong trabaho na gusto niyang magkaroon ka pa ng ibang trabaho. Ayaw niya makontento ka sa iyong church na gusto niya maganap ka pa ng ibang church. Why? Because if you cannot stay in one place, you will never grow. And if you will not grow, God cannot use you fully in the ministry. Amen? Nakakita ka na ng church hopper? Tingnan mo ugali. Tingnan mo ang ano niya. Ang, ang, ang spiritual life niya, confused. Nagpunta ko sa church na ito, naniniwala sa Calvinism. Lumipat ka ng church, naniniwala sa Arminianism. Lumipat ka ng church, naniniwala sa Biblicism. Lumipat ka ng church, naniniwala sa Humanism. Bum Lumipat ka ng church, naniniwala sa Spiritism. Lumipat ka ng church, naniniwala sa 
Uh, kung anong isim yan. Aba, ano mangyayari sa'yo? Isip mo, magkukagulo-gulo. Amen? Nakakita ka, ang pastor dito, mahigpit. Ang pastor dito, mabait. Ang pastor dito, nasa gitna lang. Ang pastor dito, tahimik. Ang pastor dito, maingay. Ang pastor dito, mayaman. Ang pastor dito, mahirap. Aba, kinukumpis mo sarili mo. Hindi ka nagkakaugat at pagka hindi ka nagkaugat, konting bagyo, bunot ka. At makikita mo na naman ang sarili mo sa ibang church. Kaya dapat merong contentment. Sabi ko sa Panginoon, ako po'y kailangan na magkaroon ng girlfriend. May edad na rin ako. Pwede ba Panginoon ibigay niya po sa akin si sister ganito? Kasi siya po ay matangkad at maganda. May ibig sabihin na naman to. Delik- delikado matangkad at maganda. Uwi na kayo. E di, ang Panginoon, binigay sa kanya. Aba, pamaya-maya, Panginoon, salamat po, binigay niyo sa akin si sister matangkad na maganda. Pero pwede ho bang ibigay niyo naman sa akin ngayon si sister na matangkad, maputi, maganda, at balingkinita na ang katawan. Hmm. Aba, binigay ng Panginoon. Mabiyaya ang Diyos sa kanya eh. After na ilang buwan, Panginoon, pwede ho ba ang ibigay niyo naman sa akin ngayon si sister na matangkad, maganda, maputi, balingkinita ng katawan at balbon. Hmm. Aba, binigay ng Diyos. Aba, pamaya-maya. Panginoon, nahihiya na talaga ako sa inyo. Dapat ka lang mahiya. Pero last na lang po, Panginoon, ibinigay niyo na po sa akin yung matangkad na maganda. Ibinigay niyo na po yung matangkad na maganda, na maputi, na balingkinita ng katawan. Ibinigay niyo na rin po, Panginoon, yung matangkad na maputi, na maganda, na balingkinita ng katawan at balbon. Pwede ho bang ibigay niyo naman sa akin? Ngayon ay si brother. Sabi, wala ka talagang contentment. Nagsawa sa babae, gusto naman ngayon pati lalaki, papatusin na. Discontent, amen? amen? Amen. Dapat meron tayong contentment. Nilagay ka ng Diyos sa church na ito, ibigay mo yung the best mo sa church na ito. Hindi yung, hindi gagamitin ko lang itong church na ito tapos nililipat ako sa iba. Huwag mong gawing ugali yon. Sapagkat you are using churches or other people as like a patch that you're going to use them in order for you to springboard to another thing. Tinan mo mga sinasabi ng Bible regarding discontent. Hebrews chapter 13.5 Why do we need to be contented? Sabi niya, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. We already have Christ and if you cannot be contented with Christ, you cannot be contented with anybody else. Sinasabi ko nga, if Jesus is not enough for you, nobody will ever be enough for you. Eh kung kay Kristo hindi ka kontento, kanino ka makukontento? Kung si Kristo hindi pa sapat sa'yo, ano at sino ang magiging sapat sa'yo? If we have Christ, then we need to be contented. Amen? Because Jesus is all and all. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 8. Ito nga, oh, very simple lang life na tinuturo ng Bible. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. May pagkain ka ba? Meron po. May sinusuot ka ba? Meron po. Pwede ka na makontento. E di ganun na lang ako, hindi. Kung kailangan, mag, kung kailangan ka pang mag-improve nang hindi ka nagiging discontented, do it. Because you can be a better steward of God. Because God can entrust you more, especially if you are a contented person. Because a contented person has all the qualities of becoming a good steward because he do not need much in order to be contented and what was given to him will be used for the glory of God. Ay, kung hindi ka makontento, abay, lahat ng ibibigay sa inyo, Diyos, gagamit sa sarili mo hanggang ikaw yung makontento. So how can you be a good steward then? So that's why, if we have the basic things of life, that is already enough for us to be contented. But if you want to aspire more, aspire more so that you can glorify God, not glorify your Self. And then, Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 11. You see, this is something that we need to understand. Paul says, I have, not that I speak in respect of once, for I have learned 
Contentment is something that we need to learn. It is not within us. It is not something that is intrinsic. It is not something that we brought into this world. It is something that we need to learn. How can we learn that? By trusting God. Why was Paul contented? Because he knew that God will supply all his needs. So there is uh, nothing to worry about. There is nothing not to be contented about. Why? Because when the need arises, God will supply the need of the apostle Paul. So he knew that. That's why he said, For I have learned in whatsoever state I am. Whatsoever state. Kahit anong state. Los Angeles, California, Ohio. It doesn't matter where. Paul says, In whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. He was contented in his missionary journey. He was contented when he was tent making. He was contented when he was out there in the sea being tossed by the storm. He was contented when he was in prison. Why? Because Paul knew that wherever he is, God is always with him. So he is contented. Hindi nga lang niya sasabing, kahit sa impyerno, pupunta ako. Kung nandun ang Panginoon. Pero God is always with him. So, we need to learn to be contented. Don't you know that we are living in a time, in a day where it is very hard to be contented? Kasi, biro mo yung araw-araw nakikita mong advertisement. Yung mga gadgets na walang hinto ang upgrade. Kabibilong pala ng iPhone 10, ay, phone 11 na, ay, phone 12 na, ay, nabugulat ka eh. Ay, 20 na pala, ay, hindi mo na eh. Hindi mo na alam eh. Kung ano nangyayari. Kabibilong mo ng, ng uh, laptop na HD, lalabas naman yung retina. Lalabas naman yung tina. Mamaya yung ina. Mamaya na. Tapos, ah, eh, kung ano-ano lumalabas. Hindi ka makukontento. Nagkaroon ka ng sasakyan. Una, tinutulak. Eh, bay, pamaya-maya, gusto mo, brand new na. It is very hard to be contented in our time and day because we are being bombarded by an advertisement Telling us to get things that we do not really need in our lives. Ang, ang excuse ngayon ito, hindi naman luxury yan eh. Necessity yan. Alam mo sabi necessity? Something that you cannot do without. Pag wala ka ba cellphone, mamatay ka? Pero yung mga kabataan ngayon, yung mga tao ngayon, Paano kaya sila nung walang cellphone? Nung walang cellphone, meron kami lata. Ha? May lata rito, may lata ron, merong lube, merong ano yung parang kawad. Ha? Lalagay sa isang kwarto, nasa isang kwarto. Kakalampagin. Hello? O, kumusta na? Hmm, kain na tayo, ha? Hmm, ay ganun. Meron kami, wala pang load. At walang bayad. Oh. oh, laging may signal yun. Paano, paano kaya silang nabuhay? Ano, alam nyo, patay kami ngayon? Oh. Kasi wala tayong contentment. Kaya ang jablo walang hinto ng kaka-offer ng mga bagay para tayo hindi makontento. May sasakyan ka na, gusto mo pa dalawa. May dalawa ka na, gusto mo pa tatlo. Anong gusto mo? Santa Clarang pinong-pino Kami po ay bigyan nyo Nang asawang labing tatlo Sa bugbog, walang reklamo Sinisinta kita, di ka ko... Walang tigil talaga Walang tigil, gusto pa labing tatlo Sa bugbog daw, walang reklamo no contentment. Econ ec economics says that man is basically insatiable. That is why business that caters to the needs of men will never go bankrupt. Because they will never be satisfied. 
If you love ice cream, they will give you one scoop, you will want two. If they will give you two scoops, you will want three. If they will give you three, you will want four. It will never stop. Why? Because there is simply no contentment in this world. But ladies and gentlemen, if you have God, then you can be contented. Amen? Because you can have everything that you need with God. He will never leave you. You always have a companion. He will supply all your needs. You will all, always have what you need in life. He will always uh, take care of you. He will always comfort you because he's a God of comfort. You will never lack love because God is love. Name it. If it is basic, God can supply it. Amen? And then not only discontent, but delay. Mm, delay. Delay is used to postpone things in life. Like for example, people will postpone salvation. It may not come. Some people may postpone service to God. They may not be able to serve God anymore. Because once you procrastinate, there is always a chance that you will not do it. Amen? Once you always say that I will do it tomorrow, you will not be able to do it because tomorrow never comes. Amen? Tomorrow never comes. Kailan ba nagkaroon ng tomorrow? Uy, alam mo, tomorrow, kumain ako. Hindi pwede. Hindi mo pwedeng gawing past tense yung future. And tomorrow is always future. So, hindi mo magagawa yun. Delay is being used by the devil. Nagpray ka. Yung answer, hindi pa dumarating. May delay. Minsan may purpose ang Diyos, pero sasabihin ng Diablo, hindi ka mahal ng Diyos, kaya hindi niya binibigay sa iyo yung panapanalangin mo. He will use that in order to make us doubt on God. Tumatanda ka ng binata o dalaga. Nadidelay ng nadidelay yung pag-aasawa mo. Gagamitin ng Diablo yan. Nagkakaedad na kayo, wala pa kayong anak. Gagamitin na yan. Ginamit ng Diablo yan. Kaya ano ah? Abraham at saka kay Sarah. O para magkanak tayo, ito na lang ano ko. Ito na lang uh, handmade ko. Sa kanya na lang. Total, pag-aari ko naman yan, kung ano anak niya, anak ko rin. Yun ang ano eh, concept niya ano eh. Ni Sarah eh. Because your maid belongs to you. They are your property. So whatever will come out of them, technically belongs to you. So Sarah is thinking that if Agar will bring forth a child, that child technically belongs to Sarah. But God explicitly told him, that is not my plan. That child is going to be from the both of you. So that is why they need to learn it the hard way. Ladies and gentlemen, if there is delay, let us be patient. Amen? Hayaan lang natin. Tampakan ni Sister Ruth, eto, kahit nandito yan. Yung gais, ang tagal na yan. Ilan taon na yan, kapatid? Four and a half years. Eh, parang nung umpisa pa rin sa ano, tatanda mo yung isang lugar, matagal na. Talagang halos walang estudyante, magkakaroon, mauubos, mawawala. Sige, pero sabi ko nga, mama, matibay itong si Sister Ruth, ako. Hindi isinasara, walang kinikita, patapo ng pera. Aba, hindi sinasara yung school. Sige lang, tayo naman, pray tayo ng pray sa guys, 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 guys. We pray because that is what we have to do. We pray for Florida, we pray for Western, we pray for all the, that are uh, schools that are involved, where our members are teaching, where they are involved. And we keep on praying. And then, last few months ago, God answered our prayers. Amen? Ito ngayon, pinagpapala. And let's continue to pray that God will continue to bless because sometimes there is delay. And if you do not have pati uh, patience, you may not receive the answer of God. Kasi pag sumuko ka agad, sabi nga nila, don't quit because you do not know the blessing is just one step ahead. And you quit. Naalala ko yung, yung cartoons na naguhukay siya ng, ng gold. Sige, ganyan siya. Wala siya makuha. And then, dun sa cartoons, ganun na lang isang, ano na lang ng piko, makukuha niya na yung ginto, eh, napagod. Nag-quit, umuwi. Sayang. Isang hataw na lang ng piko, makukuha niya na yung mga ginto. So it is always too soon to quit, especially in the ministry of God. Amen? 
Can we read Psalms 119 verse 16? This is what the Bible says about this. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Don't let God wait for you. We wait upon God because God knows perfect timing. But once God gave the go signal, don't let God wait. We must do it at once. Then number 17, next to the last. Amen? 17 na po. Disobedience. Ito yung, ito yung halos guilty tayo. Karamihan dito. Disobedience. You know, there are two famous men in the Bible named Saul. Number one in the Old Testament is King Saul. And number two in the New Testament is was the Apostle Paul. But he was known before as Saul. So both these men were of the tribe of Benjamin. Isa pinanggalingan tribo niyan. Pareho sila sa, sa tribe of Benjamin. Look at 1 Samuel 9.12 and then Philippians 3.5. Pareho sila ng pinanggalingan. And they answered 9.2, 1 Samuel 9.2. 9-2 And he had a son whose name was Saul A choice young man and a goodly And there was not among the children of Israel A goodlier person than he From his shoulder and upward He was higher than any other people From the tribe of Benjamin Maluanag ha mga kapatid so, yun ang kanyang pinanggalingan. Tuloy natin. At ang balita yun. <laughs> Ituloy natin ang basa. At sawan muna. Sawan muna. Sige, sige. Balik tayo sa one. Yeah. Minsan talaga may mga pagkakataong ganito eh. Ayan. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bekorat, ay mga pangalan, Jelly, you'll take note, the son of Aphia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And then verse 2, uh, named Saul. So he was part or from the tribe of Benjamin. Look at Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 5. Ito naman yung isang soul sa New Testament. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin. So they have a comparison. They both have the same name and they both came from the same tribe. But one was tall and impressive. We know that, that during that time, the tallest among the Israelites is Saul. That's why he was chosen a king. So he was impressive, while the other one is short and unimpressive. Kapag nakikita niyo mga picture niya, ano, parang nakakalbo na maliit siya. Si, ano, si Saul of Tarsus. And then, the Old Testament Saul began as God's friend, but he ended up as God's enemy. He started as a friend of God because he was chosen to be king. But he ended to be the enemy of God. While Saul of Tarsus started to be an enemy of God and he ended up a friend of God. Amen? He started as the chief of sinners. And then he became perhaps the greatest apostle who ever lived. The Old Testament Saul went to the witch of Endor before he died. While Saul of the New Testament went to the Word of God before he died. So, there is a similarity, but there is also a difference. But what made the difference? If they came from the same tribe, if they have the same name, if they have the same relationship with God, what happened? The Old Testament soul disobeyed God, while the New Testament soul obeyed God all his life. Amen? So listen, obedience will make the difference. And because Saul became disobedient to God, then he was disqualified from the graces of God. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22 to 23. You know the story of this, when he was commanded to kill everything that they will get from that war, including the king and all the cattle and all things, and this is what the Bible says. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? You see, you may sacrifice, but what is important is your obedience to God. 
Sometimes we sacrifice, but our sacrifice is not in obedience to the Lord. That is why, do not ever think that because you are sacrificing for God, it is something that is already acceptable to Him. You see, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. If you are going to, to uh, be given two choices to sacrifice for God or to obey, choose to obey. Because the Bible says, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Pastor, paano naman yan? Eh, ganito. Ay, hindi ako aaten sa linggo. mag overtime ako. Yung kikitahin ko, ibibigay ko sa gawain ng Panginoon. Hmm. Right? You sacrifice your earnings, but you disobeyed God in forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Ay, hindi ako magsosol winning. Meron kasi kung gig na yun. Yun na muna yung gagawin ko. Anyway, yung kikitahin ko ron, ipamimirenda ko na lang sa mga nag-soul winning. Oh. Magsasacrifice ako, no? To obey. is better than sacrifice. You see, the fat of rams is our way of serving God. But obedience is God's way of us serving Him. Look at verse number 23. Ito pa matindi. For rebellion. See? Sacrifice without obedience is rebellion. Kita nyo? Ay, hindi nga ako nag-attend, hindi nga ako naglingkod sa Panginoon, pero ito naman lahat ng kinita ko, ibibigay ko. Sasakripisyo ko to para sa Diyos. Rebelde ka raw. Meron mga yung pastor na magpipreach na, kayo mga nagbigay na malaki! Hindi kayo madal, mga rebelde kayo! Aba, hindi. Sabi niya, mabuti pa itong mga to kahit hindi uma-attend. Kung magbigay naman, matindi. Huwag na na kayong umatend, ha? O, hindi ba? Kasi hindi mo, i, hindi mo titisurin yung nagbibigay ng malaki. Hindi mo pagsasalitaan ng hindi maganda ang sino mang miyembro na malaking magbigay. Yan ang nangyayari ngayon. Pero praise God, lumaki kami sa pastor na hindi ganun. Si Pastor Lamberto Mercado, yung boy si Mr. Maribel. May member kami, contractor. Humahawak na malalaking project. Pag nag-offering yan during that time, ha, 90,000, 120,000 pesos. E ang offering ng church sa isang buwan, 16, 17, 18,000 lang. Tapos isang bagsak, 90,000. Isang bagsak, 120,000. Pag may project siya. Ngayon, paano niya nakukuha yung project? Madalas hindi umaten kasi nga kailangan niyang asikasuhin. Number two, minsan nagbabribe siya para makuha yung project. Number three, pagka ang mga mag-decide sa project, mga lalaki, binibigyan niya ng mga babae nang sa ganun pirmahan yung project. At occasionally, nagso-social drinking siya nang sa ganun maklose niya yung deal. Abay, pag uma-attend siya at magbibigay siya ng malaking offering, talagang maririnig niya ang hindi niya dapat, may, hindi niya siguro ina-expect na maririnig sa buhay niya. Sabi, hindi kami kailangan ng pera mo. Ang kailangan ng Diyos, yung pagsunod mo. Hindi mo kayang i-pribe ang Panginoong Diyos. Hindi mo kayang bilhin ang, ang dapat na pagliligin mo sa Diyos ng pera mo. Mabiro mong gaganoon yun ng pastor. Ay kung binawi ang 120,000. Oh, mga kapatid, tama yun. Naalala mo nung No, tayo pa pinagbantay dun sa isang bahay tapos may mga babaeng dumating nung gabi. Kami ni Batdoy, natulog pa kami rin sa waterbed talagang. Sabi ko, Batdoy, sarap pala ng pakiramdam, tutulog sa waterbed. Para ka nalulunod. Oh. Bapagtas kinabukasan, may mandatingan ng mga hostess, i-offer, i-bibigay pala dun sa mga Koreano ata o mga Chinese yung uh, kliyente niya. Ay sinumbong namin kay Pastor, ah, kaya anong pag-attend niya nagbigay siya ng malaking pera, eh talagang kulang na lang. Barilin siya ni Pastor kung may baril eh. Oh, why? That is rebellion against God. You think you are serving God. You think you are sacrificing, but you are rebelling against God. Brad, pakibalik mo nga. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Ano ba raw siya? Mangkukulam! Abiro mo? Mangkukulam ka, bruha ka. Oo! 
Oh, and stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. Why? You are using money in order to bribe God. Listen, you cannot bribe God. It belongs to Him anyway. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, He had also rejected thee from being king. And Saul died outside of the graces of God because of his disobedience to the Lord. Let us not forget this in Romans 6, 14 to 18, that we need to continue serving the Lord and obeying God. Look at what the Apostle Paul says. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Look at verse number 16. Know ye not that ye na ngayon, eh, but God be thank that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. You see, when you obey God, there will be life, there will be righteousness, and we are going to be accepted before God. And last but not the least, amen? That the devil will use. Okay, let us recap before we end. Number one, disappointment. Number two, discouragement. Number three, despair. Number four, Doubt, number five, disbelief, number six, destruction, number seven, double-mindedness, eight, dishonesty, nine, deceit, ten, dullness, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, Death. Hindi ka matayan. Death. D-E-B-T. Utang. Death. As much as possible if you are a Christian. Owe no man anything. As much as possible. Sometimes it is not possible. You understand? But as much as possible. Romans 13.8. Ito yung sabi ng Bible eh. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. As much as possible. Kung kaya mo rin lang, huwag kang mangutang. Why? Proverbs 22, verse number 7. Proverbs 22, 7. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. You are becoming a servant because of your debt. Instead of using your time to serve God, you will use your time to amass enough money to pay your debt. In order for you to serve God as your master, you are becoming the servant of the lender and he's becoming your master. So your loyalty is now being divided. Hindi ba napapansin, mga kapatid, kung sino yung laging tumutulong sa'yo, mas mabait ka sa kanya. Kaya nga, during our time, sabi ni Pastor, if you want to help our Bible students, do not give the money to them personally or the things to them personally. Give it to the church, put their name, and the church will give it to them so that they will thank God in all the blessings that they will receive. Kasi nga naman, kunyari, tapos ang service, eh, eh, si brother, ano, Bible student, o kama yan, meron ako nakapaipit dito, o kamay mo, kapatid. Uy, oh, ano to? Salamat po. Ah, oh. Di ba? Bandang huli, mas loyal sa akin to. Kesa kay pastor. Kasi sa isip niya, si pastor, kuripot, di man ako binibigyan. Pero ito si brother, aba, napaka-understanding nito. Napaka-giver. Dapat siya pastor. O, oh, hindi ba? <laughs> Apo, may may mga kampanya na yan. Palitan natin ang pastor. Siyang gawin natin pastor. Kasi pag siya pastor, lagi tayong meron. Di mo napapansin sa Bible study, pag ito sa Bible study, meron kang love gift. Gusto mo araw-araw nagbabible study. Parang siya, ano, yung sa Bulacan, yung pastor doon. Kasi pag binibible study niya sa governor, 2,000. 
Sabi niya, Bible study ulit ng Cigobertor. Kaya niya, alika sama ka sa akin, ba't hindi na lang ikaw? Hindi kaya niya kailangan bago eh. Uh, once a week lang ako eh. Pero pagkasama kita, 2,000 yun, tig isang libo tayo, kanya. Ikaw na lang ka ako. Bible study ka pala para sa pere. Lagi ka doon. Lagi ka doon. O, eto pa matindi. Ano sabi? Baling mga inverse, kapatid. Sabi niya, The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Ngayon, iba. Yung borrower galit pa sa lender. Pag siningil. Eh, walang pera! Wala ka pang pagintindi! Hindi mo kaya nahirap na hirap na ako! Sisingil ka pa! Layas! Oh, sorry po. Mukha nung ano. Alis yan. Walang magagawa yan. O, oh, biro mo, binaliktad mo pa Bible? Why? Kasi nilagay mo sarili mo rin eh. Walang taong maraming utang na payapa ang buhay. Pagka puro utang ka payapa ang buhay mo, baka hindi ka ligtas. Ayun na naman si pastor. Nagkaroon lang ng utang, hindi na ligtas. Hindi ko sinabing pag may utang ka, hindi ka ligtas. Makinig ka. Pagka marami kang utang at payapang payapa ka, baka, maliwanag, hindi ka labaw, baka, hindi ka ligtas. Bakit? Hindi ka makakaroon ng kapayapaan kapatid pag marai kang utang. Lalo na kaliwat kanan ng sumisingil. Kaliwat kanan, taas, baba, loob, labas. No, walang, walang, ano, walang kapayapaan sa buhay mo. Kaya nga ang kristyano, kailangan, ano, contented para hindi siya. Ngayon naman may time na kailangan. May mga hindi may iwasang bagay. At sa totoo lang, sa ayaw sa gusto mo, lahat tayo may utang naman. Tinan mo, gumagamit ka ng kuryente, ginamit mo na, bayad na. Hindi pa. Utang yun. Sa katapusan ng bayad, nagre ka ng bahay, bayad na. Hindi pa. Sa katapusan mo, pababayaran yun. Utang yun. Kaya lang, may pambayad ka. Kung wala kang pambayad, wag kang mangutang. Amen? Pastor, ang labo mo. Kaya nga nangungutang, walang pambayad eh. Sabi, huwag kang mangutang para wala kang bayaran. Kaya nga nangungutang, pastor, walang pera. Sabi, eh, kung ang uutangan mo, kapilosopiya mo, ano sa sabi niya? Ba't kita pahihiramin, wala kang pambayad? Ah, hindi ba? So, hanggat maaari, huwag mangungutang. Sapagkat ito ay magkikreate ng maraming problema and then you are going to be vulnerable and do so many things that will not glorify God in your life. Money will become a great issue in your life and any a thing that you can do for God will be stolen by your responsibility to the people that you owe. That's why if you are going to live a life that is free from all debt, then you can dedicate your life to God without any limitation by His grace. So remember, these are the tools that the devil is using in order to make us ineffective in the ministry. We have studied this. The Lord has written this in His book so that the devil cannot take advantage of us. So we need to learn this and we need to apply this in our lives. Amen? Shall we stand up? Every head's bowed and every eye closed. No heads bowed. Do not close your eyes.